disrupted everything. Gotcha. Yep. Everything, including this, this business incubator. It's like everything just slowed down so, so much. You know, on, on that topic, you know, I, I think what we've, my opinion is we've accelerated change, which in many ways was going to happen anyhow. Correct. I mean, uh, the, the, if the automobile had been accelerated faster, the price of buggy whips and horses would have low, <laughs> dramatically dropped faster. So. Yep. Well, there's Evelyn. Good morning, Evelyn. He's, and hi. there's Dino. There's Dino. And there's Russ. Hey, Russ. Hey, good morning, Russ. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> yeah, I've been a bit busy. <laughs> uh-huh, your bicycle. You passed me uh, maybe a week ago with a group. Good, good. Thank you. I, I, I tried to say hi, but you were busy crossing an intersection. You had to keep everybody safe. <laughs> Yeah, I've been uh, picking up a little bit more business. <laughs> Excellent, good, I'm so glad. People wanna get to outdoors now. This is, weather's getting nice too for all of this. I was gonna say. Exactly. Now's right, the time. And the cost of bicycles has gone up and everything else, yeah. Yeah. And I have a fleet now of uh, four bikes. So if anybody's out of town and they don't have a bike, you can still take the tour and, and just rent the bikes from me. I have nine, Russ. Nine. I have nine. Nine. See, I'll call you when I need more. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe you could maybe you could do it on a contingency basis, Russ, with Evelyn. If she if you need an extra bike for a little while or something, she's got a bike. I mean, it's kind of like a contingency. I'll rent it to you for a day or two or something like that. <laughs> Might have to work it out. Yep. <laughs> Evelyn, why do you have nine bicycles? <clears throat> okay, so um, my father. <laughs> That's loves, a good question. <laughs> I know my father loves cycling. Um, and he was notorious for buying us all bikes as well. So I have my dad's bike that he used to ride when I was five and I'm 51. So, and he had it before I was born, I suspect. Um, I have his townie. Um, there's another bike that we had that I gave my son, um, but that one got stolen, but that's not part of my nine. I have a little foldable bike. Mm -hmm. I picked up at a yard sale for 20 bucks and it was ridden twice. I have my own kind of towny like bike, my own bike I've had since my son was two. Um, my sister's bike, uh, my friend Andrew's bike, because his bike is now my bike because it's my brother-in-law's bike. I now have um, my boyfriend's bike here and I know I'm missing, oh, my mother's bike. <laughs> Incredible. Um, it's, it makes, yes, my shed is packed like Jenga right now. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Well, I, I want to know, have you named them, Evelyn? No, I don't even know how to name cars. I have a great car. And I have no idea what to name her. I actually have named my bikes. Have you? Yes, all the fleet bikes. Uh, there's Dale, Diego, Dolly, and Daisy. And Daisy. They have okay. to be a D name. I got gotcha. you. Folks, yep. it is time for us to get started. Uh, welcome to the Florida Business Incubators Spark Tank. And what we do is everybody gets a chance to share what their business is and the challenges that they may be having with it and to hear others' thoughts about what they might do about that challenge. And, of course, you get to share your thoughts about other people's challenges. So let's get started. Who would like to go first? I know everybody always oh, wants to. Oh, super. Very good. Thanks, Russ. Uh, Russ with Dunedin Bike Tours. Um, been open since January, and we've actually expanded a little bit. Like I was telling everybody, we've added a fleet of bikes for in Dunedin. Uh, in the last two months here, we've actually expanded and added uh, Tarpon Springs Cycle Tours, or Tarpon Cycle Tours is what we like to call it, uh, so that you can actually take a historic tour around Tarpon Springs. Uh, which is one is happening this Saturday. If anybody wants to go, we still have some openings. Uh, one of my biggest challenges right now is just I'm getting a lot of feedback. Everybody's, you know, watching me on Facebook or Instagram, but getting that conversion to people just to wanting to uh, 
rent a, rent a tour and go for it. It's a couple hours and it's an experience. It's a fun time. Everybody has a blast. And you get also uh, free swag bags that are almost worth what you paid for it. So it's almost like taking a bike tour for free. Um, so my biggest challenge is just converting it into sales. Hmm. So it's a question of marketing. I've been doing a lot of social media as Evelyn has seen and as Dino as well. I know, um, I, I am big into social media. Uh, I have a good following on Facebook. Um, uh, I put all the right things into the posts, make it easy for them just to click and book it right then. Uh, it's still it, just getting that people to switch over. It may have been just the weather. I don't know. It may have been the election. I don't know, but, I just need to get more people in there. Um, that's my biggest challenge, but I am starting to get, you know, three or four people on a weekends. Uh, the other weekend I had two different tours, one Saturday and Sunday. So, uh, uh it's picking up, but it, it just needs to pick up a little faster for me. Basically, I'm getting that. Yeah. It sounds more like a sales problem than a marketing problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, um, <clears throat> if I were to try to imagine all the things that would stop me from taking a bike tour, I think those are the problems that I would try to tackle from a sales perspective, you know, like, um, you know, weather would definitely be one of those, you know, I don't like being overly hot. Um, do I have to keep up with everybody? Like what if I'm not a good cyclist? Um, you know, how hard is it? Uh, how long is it? Do I get to eat? Um, you know, there, those would be some of the, the questions that I probably have. I, I don't know if they're addressed on your website or not. Um, but I, you know, I might make it a fun way, a goofy way to try to tackle some of those, those questions. I'm, I'm actually working on a video this morning that I shot some stuff, um, kind of regarding those kind of frequently asked questions, kind of like, what do you get? Is there bathroom breaks? How long is it? How hard is it? And I actually got a, a guy that's actually doing all the kind of quirky stuff. And then I'm going to answer all the kind of good questions to that. So I'm actually kind of working on parts of that a little bit already. Oh, good. And you were saying that it's a, it's like a story tour in a sense. I, the last time I I heard you talk about it on the Spark Tank, you were talking about going around and looking for all the oranges in town. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's that's still one of the things that you're tackling. Yes, okay. we still uh, we still count all the oranges. I tell about the history of the oranges, the history of Dunedin, uh, the commerce, the real estate. Uh, we touch on all those little things uh, and it, I do kind of try to keep it in a timeline so that um, people can understand how Dunedin got started and where it has come to today. So there's all every stop kind of hits a little bit of that. And people are writing up reviews for you, I hope. Do that again? Writing reviews? Uh, yeah, I ask for reviews every time. Um, right now, 4.9 stars on Google. Uh, got my Google business page up and running and um, it, you know, getting good and good reviews. So good. I haven't had any bad reviews at all from anybody. Good. <laughs> Super. Best, um, question, who is your target audience? Because Brent and I have done a ton of bike tours, but we typically do bike tours when we visit a new city. So, sure. you know, living in Dunedin, we probably never would have thought to go on your bike tour because for us, it's like a very touristy, um, vacation thing, but it's a great idea for a date night. Sorry, also our we have to figure out our lighting in our new house. <laughs> right, your lighting comes and goes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but wanted to get your thoughts. You know, who are you targeting specifically? Are you targeting people maybe who live outside of Dunedin or um, visitors or locals? For Pinellas County, right? Um, I always kind of look at it as it's for residents, it's for visitors, and it's for residents with visitors. Uh, I had one recently where um, new residents that have come into town, one to know about more about Dunedin, and then happen to have a, another couple join them from New York. So they wanted to both kind of learn about it. They had an absolute blast with it. Um, I would say that, you know, anybody that's even been here in the area, Dunedin, Clearwater, Tarpon, any of them, if they have been in the area for a long time, I've had some uh, residents that have been here 35, 40, 50 years, taking the tour and they go, wow, you taught us more about this area than we ever knew. We had no idea that it was uh, all the stuff that we had. Yeah. I mean, I think that's great. I think, right, people who live here probably 
aren't as apt to search for that as maybe somebody who's coming from Tampa and looking for a fun date excursion. Right. But I right. think if there's a big business proposition, oh my gosh, we really have to figure out this lighting. Um, <laughs> and I think that's something we'd be interested in. We just didn't know about it. So we'll think about that and like even yeah. keep you in mind too, as we're, you know, seeing things new to the area and wanting to explore more. Um, sure, but sure. We'll, you'll probably have a new customer with us because we mm -hmm. love bike tours. Well, awesome. Go to DunedinBikeTours.com. Dino, can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, I locked up. I don't know why. And then jumping back in. I've been having problems with Zoom. Hey, Russ, you had mentioned about uh, starting up uh, the uh, Tarpon Springs tour or whatever. Yes. Um, have you have you seen this book? Uh, I have seen the book. I have actually not read it because I actually have a tour guide that is running it in Tarpon. Oh, in Tarpon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you hired somebody to actually do right. it up that way. Yeah. Okay. No, I was just and wondering. Fantastic I, young man that uh, has really uh, taken off and he, he does a great tour. I, I actually was very impressed when he showed me what he had, had researched. So. No, that's, that's why I stepped away. I, I remember somebody bought this for me or whatever. And I started going through it and it's like, I've lived here since 91 and my mom grew up here and I learned shit in here that I never <laughs> even knew. It was just like, holy crap. This uh -huh. is kind of neat. I don't know if they got something like this down there in Dunedin or not, but. Um. Uh, they do have one in the bookstore like that. Um, okay. In back in the day books and also the history museum, they've got one. Cause I mean, this has got like, these, this has got tons of pictures and everything else. I mean, for the most part, if anybody's not been to, a tarpon up behind the bayou where they throw the cross in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually um, passed by that. Yeah, the, it is the Heritage Center now. And uh -huh. a lot of the pictures that are in here, they've got like up on the walls and stuff like that. And you can like right. you can go in there and see and it takes you through the history and how tarpons changed over the years and everything else. It's kind of really neat. Yeah, and, and that's part of our tour. We actually go by Spring Bayou and, and talk about the uh, uh, the throwing of the cross in for the uh, right. uh, festival. Uh, and we hit some other things too before we hit the sponge docks. So it's kind of right. it's a very fun tour. A lot oh, of people there's lots of other stuff. That's most people only know about the sponge docks. And that's right. what, you know, I mean, because that's what everybody talks about all the time. But it's amazing to really understand the history of Tarpon Springs and downtown Tarpon Springs. And exactly. I don't know if people know that. If any of you have been there in the right on the corner, um, there's the tr the old train depot there, which is kind of another little historic site that they have. That mm -hmm. was actually the end of the railroad that used to come from up north, you know, like from, you know, the northeast or whatever. Yeah, that, was the, that was the end of the line of at one time, <laughs> ended in Tarpon Springs before they... Yeah before the Platts uh, built the railroad between Tarpon and St. Petersburg, which really kind of opened up uh, the whole Pinellas County area. So. Right. And I actually Just found out that <laughs> Dunedin is the oldest town on the east coast of, or the west coast of Florida, Florida? south of Cedar Key. However, Tarpon Springs is the oldest city. And they were incorporated before Dunedin was. Oh, wow. Cool. Wow. So are you partnered, are you partnered um, with the, the little historical museum here in downtown Dunedin? Do you have some sort of reciprocal relationship with them so that after the tour people go in or? Um, sort of. I, I, I've met with Vinny many a times. I've met with a lot of the staff there. I've been, you know, of course, everything through uh, the Mission Museum. Uh, they all support me. Uh, they actually have allow me to put brochures in the museum and stuff as well. Um, but other than that, that's probably about it as far as the history side of it. Um, uh, I do a lot of research in there too. If I want to go a little bit deeper on some subjects, uh, I'll, I'll jump in there and check it out. But you, uh, right, Maggie, uh, 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 would you want to share what you just put in the, uh, chat yeah. for us? Yeah. Um, we just were chit chatting and added some other thoughts. Um, I think partnerships are great to everyone's point. We didn't know if like Cafe Racer or, you know, other bike centric sure, organizations sure. might be good partnership. Mm -hmm. um, also Airbnb experiences. I don't know if you're on there. Um, yep, working on that. Cool. Yeah, um, 
That's how we Cafe Racer, he and I have talked uh, a long, uh, extensive times, many a times, uh, before COVID, even during COVID. Um, and I was going to partner with him at one point, but then once I started adding my bikes, I kind of felt it was more like a conflict of interest. So I've actually partnered with Two Crow Coffee, and I'm actually finding a lot more people at Two Crow Coffee that are coming up and asking me about bike tours, uh, just being there, because there's a lot of bikers that actually come there and get coffee in the mornings. Uh, and the other, other experience with the Airbnb experiences, uh, I started the process. Uh, one of my biggest challenges on that is they want pictures, kind of a, a third party looking out, looking in. And I just don't have anybody yet to take those pictures. I've been able to pose people, but they don't want that. They won't allow that. Yeah. It has to be a third party looking in for an experience. Yeah. So I have to get somebody to ride along one weekend and just take pictures. Who wants to volunteer? I might there you go. Evelyn, what do you go? Evelyn will do that, right? Yeah. But yeah, I've got a great camera. I just have to stay ahead of the pack. Oh, when this life runs at about 100 miles an hour, we run three miles an hour. <laughs> I do about 15, if I'm lucky, 16. But no, I <laughs> go that fast. So. <laughs> no, no, we we only go about three miles an hour on average. Okay. Right. If um, Evelyn can make it, I'm an, another possibility. For, okay. Um, awesome. For taking Press. photos for you. For us, have you looked at uh, like maybe, um, you know, segmenting some of the things like a singles bike ride, expanding on what Maggie said, um, maybe doing uh, ghost tours or uh, Christmas rides, we're going to lighten up the <laughs> spokes with lights, um, at, you know, kind of maybe at nighttime, you know. Uh, Batch.com on bikes, like Carl, yeah. I like that. <laughs> ghost, <laughs> ghost, tours, ghost tours on bikes. Uh, you know, just, just something like that. And maybe uh, group sales, because then when people see groups, you know, it'd be kind of a fun thing to do. Um, maybe you could partner with some of the merchants in Tarpon Springs and Dunedin that, you know, you have a van or a car picks up, they, they can buy things at the shopping bike ride kind of pokey thing, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. okay. I'll be quiet. Maybe. No, that's no, a no, great they're idea. They're all good ideas. Um, the, I actually tried to do a Halloween ride, but no one signed up. Um, I actually want to do a Christmas ride and, and kind of do it like we're all dressed as Santa Clauses and we all ride down and, and do a Santa Claus parade. But I'm trying to work that out with the city a little bit as well. So um, since we can't have parades and people shining up, I thought, well, if you went down the trail and people lined up on the trail, you could certainly social distance. <laughs> Russ, actually, Carl kind of struck on something. I, I, mm -hmm. I think... Do, what you might consider if you don't already have this is do you have a do you have a a marketing package okay not necessarily it's something that you can give to an organization to help mm -hmm. promote what it is that you guys have within their group because mm -hmm. in a lot of cases where people used to group together and they can't through this doing something outdoors the problem is they can't figure out what to do. So if you take those things to them, you may give them options, then they're selling for you. You don't have to sell everything. Sure, Let the sure. organization sell for you. So well, I will work on a, a marketing sales. package. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be easy enough to do. You, mm -hmm. You've got the material, I'm sure, to do it. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of writing something that is from that, that to add with that material specific to the organization so the organization knows how to sell it to their members more or less within their sure. organization or whatever sure. so that's a good idea i like that yeah I, i'm gonna look into that thanks carl thanks dino sure that's why we're here <laughs> yeah Amen. So let, let, let me toss an idea out here uh, -huh. uh russ it seems that this the the folks that are well, I'll just jump to the bottom line and then try and explain it later. A gift shop idea, Russ. People are taking your bus, your, your bikes to go out and learn and, and, and they're social distancing. They're having an enjoyable day. They're learning about the, and being educated. So why wouldn't, like the book that you, that Dino showed up, why wouldn't the offer of a book like that for the three people being interested in it, why would that not be a, coherent, cogent, whatever the right word is, go along with the same thing that mm -hmm. that that they, on a tarpon tour, you want to know a little bit more, you want to have a keepsake, 
I mean, think of gift shops and museums. They always have these little chotskis and things like sure. that to sure. remember the moment and the experience. Right. Now, I don't know if that's suitable. <coughs> Pardon me. I don't know if that's suitable for you, but uh, the people that are there doing that and experiencing it, and they want to might want to be able to carry that memory into the future with them. Yeah, or, and I want to give that as a, as a gift book to somebody. Sure. Um, I actually took a tour down in Key West more than 10 years ago now. Uh, and just recently we got rid of the t-shirt that I bought <laughs> at the time, but I still remember the experience and now I've connected with that uh, tour group as well. Uh, I do give swag bags away, which actually helps promote other small businesses. Right. Because right. it's uh, either a free gift or a dollar off or 15% off or something at local businesses around town that adds up to over $20, whether it's in Tarpon or Dunedin, it doesn't matter. It adds up to almost a $20 worth of value. Uh, and it's some tchotchkes in there too, from those local businesses. And eventually I do want to add my own little s store, if you will, to add in like uh, Donald, like you're saying of having that memorable experience that is coming eventually, but just not at that level yet. I think once I get a little more in there, I could probably get that started. I guess. When Matt, I've gone Matt, to the, Brent, uh, what you guys are doing may be a good thing to connect with Russ because, I mean, he's already kind of ahead of the game. He's probably had some of those conversations. And so, you know, I mean, you guys just provide extra added value to what it is that Russ has got at the same time. And, you know, so I think that's probably a good affiliate partnership that yeah. would make a lot of sense for sure what you guys yeah, are doing. talking about that on the side as well um, have you yeah um, definitely something to, to think about it and, and talk through yeah we'll connect with you Russ, too okay um, all right i'll uh i'll put my info out here on the chat do you think anybody like uh somebody that owns a video company would you could partner with them and then they could uh buy a dvd of their ride or something or is there much of a market for that i wouldn't say probably as much anymore uh, years ago, I used to buy uh, a lot of um, DVDs when I go to a carnival cruise or something like that for an experience. But typically, I don't see a lot of people buying DVDs. They can get so much downloaded now. Um, and I don't know how to monetize that part of it. And, and certainly taking video of it is, is even a little bit harder, too. So um, you can stick a Gro GoPro on there, but it's a lot of after the fact editing and dropping it. Sure. Cutting out stuff they wouldn't watch. Maybe a maybe a video company would do that for you, Russ. Yeah, I don't know if they'd do it for free. <laughs> well, no, I understand they would want something, you know, to do that. I'm just saying that might be an add-on that somebody can purchase as a part of their tour if they wanted mm -hmm. a video of it or something or another like that. They could purchase that, put the GoPro on their on their thing and then you know then the net you know then the production company can edit the video for them or whatever or something sure like sure okay maybe an idea yeah I, I i'd like to chip in and say maggie i just got a uh, little newsletter here from maggie today yep and i was just going to i i thought it was very tastefully and wonderfully done very uplifting very uh, shall we say partially spiritual but very well done on a higher plane and is that something that I could send out to promote your business? I would, I would love that. Um, feel free to send that out. I can send you a link to the campaign as well. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. And would love for everyone, if you're interested, um, if you like the newsletter, please subscribe. And we're all about connecting small businesses, ideas, and people. So um, it's right in line with what all of you do. And yeah. In the yeah. I already like the Facebook page. Yeah, good. Thanks, Dina. We <laughs> I, Maggie, I was thinking that this goes beyond our local area. Yes. The article, as I read it, applies to almost any person purchasing things today across the country. Correct. And yeah. so I have people in many different cities that I could share it with. I don't necessarily know how you personally would benefit from it. But it, it, maybe it's just part of uh, branding or what have you. But I also have a lot of people in the local area that I can share okay. it with. If we're going to switch to Maggie and Matt oh, and sorry. Sean, then I'm, I'm, they need to introduce themselves because there are a couple of folks here who don't know their business. Yeah. Exactly. 
do you, do we want to go? I mean, sure. So I'm Maggie. Hi, everyone who I don't know. Um, I'm Brent. We are co-founders of Local Union. Um, and like we said, we're essentially a business empowering community. So we do that really in two different ways. One way is through um, small business uh, and community business development strategy consulting. So basically, we're just a consulting firm working on business development. Um, and then the second piece is through a marketplace, which is essentially like a next generation innovation hub on trying to spear community empowerment. So it sounds like a lot, but really all we're trying to do is make it easier for communities to be the best versions of themselves. Um, one of the new ideas that we have, besides just the branding and the overall content of giving people the tools and resources for themselves and their businesses to empower their communities, um, Brent and I are also working on a new startup specific to Dunedin called the Dunedin Market and Delivery. Um, so I don't know, do you wanna pitch sure. that? And on that idea, the easiest way to think of it is Amazon, but you're partnering with local businesses and then doing same day delivery from the shops of the local businesses you partner with. So think of your coffee shop, your bookstore, your hardware store, we take their products and then deliver Dunedin. So Dunedin becomes a self-sustaining community where it's keeping dollars local versus partnering and spending money outside the community. Yeah. So the latest on that one is we're meeting with businesses um, this week in the past week we're trying to have three partners by the end of this week and we're really trying to launch this quickly by november 16th with our soft launch so we can at least have um, products on our e-commerce marketplace and then we'll start the delivery hopefully on uh, a month 10 days from now essentially so yeah we're trying to move very fast um but we've had this idea developing for probably over a month now and it's taking the strategy we put together and getting to the implementation stage now. So is your deadline kind of there, uh, Brent? Um, you guys are trying to get ready so that you guys are ready to operate for, because small business Saturday's coming up, like, what is it, uh, first weekend, first Saturday in December, I think, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, so that's great. We're yeah. trying, we were trying to open in time for our holiday season. Right. So that was, was our idea. You know, the first, launch, right? We're creating a website to make it easy for you guys to go to one spot to shop local and then providing that same fast day or same, same day fast delivery. Um, the beginning is going to be small because we really want to make sure we have the right partners. So one of the partners we're working with right now, are we allowed to talk about it? Is um, Resupply. So they're new to the Dunedin area, but they essentially offer um, sustainable and eco-friendly cleaning products and home products. And they do basically like bulk, um, we're, we're working with them to create almost like a milkman system of you can get cleaning supplies delivered to your house, you know, give back the glass jars and then it gets refilled. Um, a really cool, unique brand that we're super excited personally, they're in the city. Um, but yeah, hoping to work with them. We have a coffee person lined up and then we have a, hopefully a pet store lined up for our lunch. Um, but if you guys know any business owners or people, <coughs> who it, oh, bless you, <laughs> <laughs> let us know. I guess the challenge for today, it's kind of with what Russ was saying too, and maybe it's not necessarily a challenge, but would love to get people's thoughts. You know, we're now creating our marketing plan and strategy, trying to reach consumers. Um, and it's hard, like Russ, I was looking at everything on your on your website, like you have Google down, you know, SEO is down, you search Dunedin bike tours, you pop up, you have great reviews, you're doing everything you can, you know, we kind of feel like we're trying to do that as well. Um, but it's hard, right? It's hard to market to people, it's hard to get out there. Um, even Resupply, the company, cleaning supply company we've been working with, they've been here for five weeks and literally I've been driving to St. Pete because I had no idea they existed. Like I would Google, you know, bulk organic cleaning supplies. And the only place was like in Seminole Heights or St. Petersburg. Um, and it was a news article from, what was it from? Do you know? Beacon. Beacon so. that promoted them, um, that allowed us to figure out they exist. And so I think that would be interesting too if any of you guys have resources on like news outlets or news stations or magazines that people read um, for ourselves, for us, for other people, because I feel like that's a really good way to get into people's minds and inboxes and screens. Um, 
and it's something that we can't really control as closely as our own SEO, our own website, newsletters, et cetera. Yep. It does take patience. For sure. Well, that's, that's the problem is the SEO part of it takes time to build up and people mm -hmm. don't want to take the time to do it. Um, when we had the digital marketing agency, Bob and I always, part of the plan always has to include the SEO piece of it, but until the SEO starts working, um, was, you know, you had to do something. So you got to, you got to kind of put either pay ad or Facebook advertising or something in the mix there that you can control the spend and testing the messaging and all that other kind of stuff and get the feedback that you need to make sure that those are the things that people are really looking for. Um, I tell people that all the time. I mean, Maggie and, and Brent, I know you guys know this because you guys kind of come from that world. So you understand that. But I think most people don't realize marketing is not a, I know what it is that I'm doing. You got to spend a lot of time and a lot of energy testing. Okay. And most people don't have the patience to test the stuff figure out what works and what doesn't throw the stuff that doesn't work out, keep the stuff that does and then change one thing and modify and, and measure and make sure you're getting the result that you want and moving forward in the direction that you want. But that takes a lot of time and energy and most small business owners don't have the patience to do that, you know? So my two cents. Well, and you're right. People don't have a lot of time to do that, which is why sometimes it's good to hire the expert. Hire somebody outside yeah, to do it. Yeah. The things that I'm not good at, let me hire somebody to do them for me, if I can do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I hired a uh, uh, social media expert just to do an evaluation on my uh, website and social media and everything. And he gave me lots of pointers and tips on how to increase it. And, and right. Apparently, one thing he mentioned that really stuck with me was video is everything on social media. Yep. can't just do a little post. Okay, so I started doing little small videos and having a video company do it for a little bit, but then I learned how to do it myself. And that's just where I really started taking it off because then I was allowed to be more creative with what I wanted to do. And now I have a strong media so, uh, following, uh, social media following, because I'm getting, no I'm getting noticed walking through the park. People are saying, you're that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, so you're on the right track, Russ, you're on the right track. The stuff that you're doing that's working, document the hell out of it, okay? Because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're building your job based off of what you just said. And that's the trap that most people, if you look at my, at the BGS website, you know, that's what I talk about, the trap. The trap is people start trying to figure that stuff out. I can do it myself. They learn it and then they say, well, nobody can do it like me. Well, yeah, because you never turned it into a system. So systemize that so that you can pass it off to somebody else. You can right. even use it. I mean, you could still outsource that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, you need, you need to tell people, this is what my expectation is. And this is how I'm going to evaluate whether you hit that expectation or not. And I'll pay you as long as those two things are met. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I find that's a lot of times why business small business owners don't know how to delegate or how to outsource stuff correctly, you know, and it's, and then they, in their mind, they make up that it's like, well, nobody knows what the way to do it the way that I did. It's like, well, no, you didn't communicate what was in your head so that they gave you what you wanted. <laughs> Great, great, great thought there, Dino. Thank you. Who's next? Tiffany? I see Tiffany over there. I'm curious to hear from Tiffany. Yeah. Hi, Hi, I'm Tiffany. <laughs> um, so I am a hairstylist in Clearwater. Um, I'm branding myself as vegan colorist because I love coloring and I'm vegan and I take it very, very seriously. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> say, actually that's, you know, um, my son's vegan. 
he's 25. He started when he was 18. Um, and it's an interesting, um, you know, life change. Uh, people don't always understand it. So maybe I'll share a little bit with, um, you know, with hairstyling where, where that plays a role because, you know, a lot of us don't always understand. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. <laughs> the best chef ever for vegan food. But. <laughs> yeah. So um, it, for me, it's a lifestyle. It's not just the food I eat. So that goes along with the color I use, the products I use. Um, so a lot of color um, for conditioning, uh, people put lanolin in, which comes from sheep's wool. Even though you're not killing the animal, you're still using the animal and that is cruelty in the eyes of a vegan. Um, so anything with lanolin, no. Um, animal testing, definitely no. Um, a lot of people don't understand um, the animal testing in China, in mainland China. So let's take Redken for existence. Um, their products are technically vegan because they don't contain any animals or any, any animal byproducts like honey or beeswax. But the thing is, if they sell in mainland China, they are literally paying the government because it is a law there that the companies have to test on animals, period. Um, <clears throat> There's no, sorry, <clears throat> there's no like yes or no, you can do it. So for Redken, they, they sell in mainland China. So technically they are not vegan um, because they are not cruelty free. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think it's just about the food that you eat. Um, so for me, I like educating um, to say why it is or isn't or how I feel about it because everybody is different. I don't push my veganism on anyone. Um, I just say I'm vegan. I want to reach out to the vegan community, but if you're not vegan, I'll also do your hair. But there's a lot of little things that go into it. Um, even with waxing, there's beeswax and wax. If you get like an eyebrow wax or a leg wax and people don't know that. Um, so I'm trying to reach out to the vegan um, community because I I'm very passionate about it and i've seen a lot of companies and other stylists that say oh i'm vegan but they use stuff that isn't cruelty free so for me it's like this this whole thing so um i'm just branding myself as the vegan colorist so everything is under that um i started a mini blog um as far as reviews i have google and facebook but i also have two uh strictly vegan sites where my vegan guests can leave reviews to attract more vegans. So yeah, it's like so much into it that people don't even think about. Yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of a cultural aspect to it in, in my experience. On the flip side of that, um, you know, it, it's very funny how often we go somewhere and we ask if something's vegan and it's actually vegetarian um, and it's very frustrating. But my, my son, um, he, posits it as uh, the animal has no choice. And mm -hmm. since it's a living creature, he wants creatures to have choice. And uh, you know, it's like the Dalai Lama, you know, I kind of yeah. know that. But I think it's important because, uh, you know, there's, there, is more, there are more and more people who are headed in that direction and the services aren't there. And you don't think of things like that. I mean, I learned my lesson when I bought my son a pair of wool socks for Christmas. <laughs> wow, those are great mom, just won't wear them. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, so I've become very sensitive to that in the community because when he visits, I like to be able to, to, you know, feeding my kid, especially, but giving him opportunities to have other services in place. So excellent to know. So you have a website? Yeah, it's just vegancolorist.com. Um, yeah, put, it, put it in the chat. Oh, you know, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm also, I started a mini blog. I'm not really a blogger. So I wanted everything to be like five or 10 minute read, nothing crazy. Like I had to go to Egypt to get this ingredient to use in my broth, like <laughs> a lot of food bloggers do. Um, so I just wanted it quick and easy. And this week I actually am on vacation and I'm doing a mini series on my Instagram of me cooking and making um, faux meat. So yesterday I had this whole thing in my stories about uh, vegan beef crumbles and um, how I'm making them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
So I, I get a lot of questions like, oh, what do you eat? And um, I just like to share because vegan food is really good. <laughs> um, what, what, by the way, Tiffany, good to see you again. Yeah, <laughs> you too. <laughs> um, one of the things that I, I would recommend that you might want to do, you might want to have a conversation. Um, so the lady that runs the cat rescue where we got all of our rescue kitties from mm -hmm. is v very, very vegan. And so she's, she's run, she's, she runs the business in that particular manner, obviously, and that sort of thing. So understanding how someone else who has kind of that mindset and that belief system and, you know, how they go about operating, you know, granted it's a nonprofit organization, but still, I mean, a nonprofit just means they're not paying taxes more than anything else. They still have all the same struggles that, you know, any other business has. Um, you might check, you know, you might want to connect with uh, Rihanna and see, she may have some tips and some ideas for you from that standpoint. I mean, I can give you a regular help, but I don't understand, even though we've got lots of friends that are vegan and that practice that lifestyle, I don't know if I have anything, you know, specific. She would be a good one. Um, the name of the rescue is the Little Cat Rescue. Okay. And she's she's uh, located up in Newport Ritchie. And I was just getting ready. I can't remember her last name. Let me go out to Facebook and find her because She's always in our stream because we're kitty fanatics now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for me, it's like, um, even though I'm vegan and it would be great if every single one of my hair clients were vegan, um, I want non-vegans too. Not to be like, hey, you should go vegan, but because I love doing hair and I don't want to restrict it just to vegan, but I wanted to have something that is me as a brand. If, if, if that's the case, Tiffany, what I would recommend is focus, focus a lot of what you were writing about and talking about as to the benefits of vegan products as opposed to your normal mainstream products, you know, from a hairstylist perspective. I think, I think there are people that are doing things to their, my mom was a beautician, so I understand that there are people that are doing things to their hair and they don't realize what it is that they're doing to your hair. And so if there's an advantage of using a vegan product, you know, you may pick up people that would never be a vegan themselves, but just the fact that they're destroying their hair in the way that they are and there are other options available to them, they just don't know that those options are available. Yeah, and I, I get that with people that aren't vegan. So I have um, a, a color apron that I put vegan colorist on and people be like, oh, you're vegan. Yeah. And then that's how like we kind of get into the, into the conversation too. Yeah. yeah. And on, I started a few months ago on my Instagram doing a monthly uh, product spotlight of a product that's vegan, cruelty-free that I love and why you should love it too. Um, so I'm just doing like little, little tiny blurbs like that. I'm trying to make more videos. Let, let me ask you this. What, what is your, your your goal or your main objective here is it is it just to get clients and be a hairstylist in that area and the reason i ask this is because i mean we met through Brittany, obviously mm -hmm. okay and we know brit's the color person but not necessarily you're, you're separating yourself even more from that is that your intent is to kind of be a color expert in the vegan space or is it just because you want to do those are the, that's the way you want to do your and you're trying to attract because th those are two different things in your marketing plan mm -hmm. and the way that you would approach your marketing would be different as a result of you know what the actual end goal that you're looking for would be yeah so i mean the end goal would be to be as busy as brit because oh yeah she's crazy busy i know <laughs> 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 um, but, um, I love blonding. Um, I love vivid colors like pink and purple and stuff, but I also advertise ethical extensions. 
um, because not all extensions are ethical. So those are the three things that I want to specialize in eventually and become someone that can say, oh, I do specialize in this because I know so much about it and I've done it so many times. Um, but for me right now is just getting busy because with COVID, a lot of people think, and this has been forever, a lot of people think hair is a luxury. It's not a necessity. Um, so I'm trying to be like, no, you have to take care of your hair. You have to get, you know, trims every so often. You need a haircut because you're going to ruin your hair. Right. If you go, I have actual friends that even though they know I'm a hairstylist, don't come and see me for like two or three years to get a haircut, um, which is crazy. So right now it's just kind of building my brand, but that's where I want to go eventually is definitely blonding, vivids, and extensions is what I want to do, like okay. most of the time. So what makes an extension ethical? Um, so a lot of, there's different ways that you can get hair from extensions. Um, a lot of places get hair from salon floors um, and sell them um, to people that make extensions or companies that make extensions. Um, also people that go to temples that have their head shaved for religious purposes. Um, companies come in and buy that hair, even though they are presenting that hair to their deity or whatever they're doing it for. Um, so the company that I use is vegan. So their glue that they use is vegan. Um, now, also, the ethical part is they actually pay people a fair wage um, for the hair that they are selling to them. So it's not like, hey, I'm going to give you $10 to cut off all your hair. They give them a fair wage. Um, also, the, um, uh, what is it, the company that the people go and actually make the extensions, they only work eight hours a day. They get an hour lunch. They're not overloaded. Um, they have time off. Um, all the good things that should happen mm. that don't happen a lot in the extension world. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Interesting. Tiffany, yeah. I have a quick question. Um, do you have a, a salon that you're working out of? Or are you working from home? Um, I work at Salon Emiliani in okay. Clearwater. Okay. And do, and Dino brought up the thing about the, you know, what's your ultimate goal? Would the ultimate goal be for you to own your own salon that would be all vegan? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I'm asking. I've seen, That's... Yeah, I've seen what goes into owning a salon and it's personally not for me. I mm -hmm. like to be with everybody. I don't want to be in charge of everybody. Okay. Um, it, even in hair school, our teacher said, who wants to own a salon? And every single person's hand went up except for mine. <laughs> it's just not something... I want to do. I like my free time. Okay. Well, then you know your goal. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and certainly at some, you know, you could definitely be a consultant for somebody who wanted to open a vegan salon as you gain your experience and continue the work that you're doing. I think that's great. Yeah. That's why I was asking the question or yeah. be a resource for people that were interested in that. And so you could learn to monetize your exactly. product and that kind of stuff. Monetize the knowledge. That, yeah, that would be good because right now I, um, I have a Facebook for only vegan hairstylists and I spent four years uh, contacting companies, researching, because even though there's brands that I want to use, maybe not everybody wants to use them. So I was like, here's a whole list of companies you use what you want to use and then we, it's we talk about, you know, why it is vegan or not vegan, because the whole mainland China comes up very often. Right. Um, yeah. So it's just right now, it's just getting that business in. Um, and that's it. I feel like I'm doing everything to market myself. Um, and I'm not sure what else I need to be doing. Well, Tiffany, I'll just say I love your concept. I think it's incredible. And I think you have a really great niche in the market, um, which will make you stand out versus other people. And it's something I really care about. I don't color my hair, but I look for like vegan makeup. We're not full vegans, but we usually just, we have like a plant-based diet. So for us, that's something that's really important. Um, but I would recommend too, there's some great companies out there, you've probably seen a lot of them that 
are really genius about selling the education versus the product. And through the selling of the education, right, they are able to then sell you the product. So what comes to mind, um, for me, I can send you a list. I have a whole list on actually our website, but one of them is Blue Land. It's a clean supply company. Um, and another is um, Caraway. They are a pots and pan company. And both mm -hmm. of them sell the experience. So the pots and pan company basically educates you how Teflon is horrible for you. And by the end of like their ads and communications, you feel like it's the most important brand in the world. And all you want to do is buy their pots and pans, which we ended up buying their pots and pans. Um, and Blue Land is it about... Worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Uh, Blue Land about, you know, how do we rethink cleaning supplies and how do we get plastic out of our, um, out of our homes? And they've done a really good job. And I think if you keep doing what you're doing and finding that audience that, you know, I think vegan people who are vegan will automatically go to you. It's the people on the fringe who are interested in a more healthy lifestyle, interested in making sure that, you know, what they put into their bodies are healthy. Those are the people where I think you'll have great success in educating them that they should be thinking about this next time. Um, that they get their hair done. So, I mean, really just a big kudos and I think it's awesome. And maybe the one suggestion I would have is maybe do an FAQ on the website just to start that education piece so people can start to understand. I had no idea about that there was anything of animal products in hair supplies whatsoever. So just having that and letting consumers um, get more informed, I think is really powerful. And why they should care. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to start my little mini blog. I, I think I just started like a week ago. Um, but I wanted to do things like that. Um, I wanted to definitely put in my cooking because I love cooking as well. Um, yeah. So I think it's I think it's gonna go well. Um, but again, if my vegan or not, I'll if you want your hair done, I'll, I'll I'll do it. So, <laughs> but like Britt, my manager, um, they are not vegan, but they are very strict in getting, making sure that the products they use are cruelty free. Um, so that's a good stance that they have as well. So it kind of, our worlds kind of collide, even though we're both hairstylists, but as far as like the cruelty free thing, they really understand my stance on it as well. When a lot of people don't understand it at all. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Very Tiffany. interesting. Thank you, mm -hmm. Tiffany. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. So we always you. learn something new here for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why we you, come. You, That's why we you betcha. Up. You betcha. <laughs> hey, I wasn't going to get you, let you get away with just saying, ah, oh, vegan product. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, is that a habit of yours, Tiffany, that you kind of need a push to get started? Because once you got going, you were great. Um, kind of, I get kind of nervous in like new settings. So I'm kind of like an introvert, even though I'm technically here by myself. I just like, even on the computer, I get very nervous. So sometimes I give me a little push. <laughs> you do great. You do great. Super. Yeah, All right. Yeah. I, uh, oh, go ahead. I'd, like, I'd like to pitch in here. Uh, there I, I, um, I had a concern about speaking. And one of the old phrases is people would rather be viewed than give a public speech. So they'd rather be dead than give a public speech. <laughs> and so there's an organization that has, I've never heard a negative comment about ever. And that's called Toastmasters. And it's a very oh, yeah. uplifting, supportive organization. And I've had tremendous experiences and knowledge and uh, education and how you can take a concept and talk about it, develop it and, and the people that I have met are very supportive and helpful. So you know, that might be something that you would uh, want to look into. There are several chapters in this area. There was one here in Dunedin. Um, and, and there's, well, there's three or four in the area. Let me just say it that way. One was here in Dunedin. Yeah, definitely. Super. All right, who's next? I, can I ask Don, um, because I, I've been to some meetings, but I don't know that I've ever caught what Don does. 
<laughs> That's okay. Nobody catches what Don does. <laughs> Evelyn, oh, thank you for the question. Thank you for the question, but I'll answer it in the future. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I'm still having decided what I want to be when I grow Don, up. Don, the well, future I'm... is here. Oh, that's that's true too. That's true too. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm I'm an old guy, and uh, I I'll just tell you that uh, after 43 years, I, I I exited the financial services business, and uh, my 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 line was. Uh, that uh, I basically am an old cowboy and I didn't want to die with my boots on. So I hung up my spurs. And so that is something that resonates with me. And I, I, haven't, I haven't gone into the bunkhouse and just gone to sleep. I, I'm still applying some of the acquired knowledge over the course of time to help small businesses. And right now, a lot of the small businesses uh, need to need some help at this level and all the way on up to higher levels. So I'm basically a very specialized consultant that works on a contingency basis. So nobody pays me anything until I find them a, a, a value. So is, Any challenges done? <laughs> oh, several. <laughs> I'm, I make a list every day. Um, one of the best challenges has been, and I've alluded to this is the clockify issue. How do I spend my time intentionally? And that by just recording that time and then going back and reviewing it, it allows me to focus on the activities which are of the greatest value to me personally and spiritually and educationally and also from a business growth opportunity. And a lot of that goes back to what Dino said, why did you start in the business? What are you trying to get as you go forward in time? Um, yeah. You know, I, a lot of this next gig in my life is, uh, I'm looking for some fun and wanting to help. I've, I've always been told I should be a teacher, but. I said, when I was much younger, I said, well, gee, that's really nice. I think I'd like to do it, but there's not enough money in it. So I never, I never went to the, the teaching angle. But that was my personal decision that I made years and years ago. So I enjoy helping people. I help them get their business going. And uh, Evelyn, I've got a little bit of um, small business uh, consulting under my belt. And I was a... Um, you say an adjunct professor for Eckerd College for a while, so that's that's what I do. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Right. I appreciate your showing up here uh, just to help <laughs> with sharing your expertise. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super. Okay. So who's next? Do I have to call in somebody? <laughs> I called last time. Yeah. Did call him? Carl? Uh, hi, good morning. Carl Schrader, uh, Schrader Accounting Tax. Got a business in Margo, Florida. and Had a good year. Uh, looking forward to some uh, rest and regrouping over November and December here since all compliance issues are done. But um, I'm getting... Uh, people coming in the door now with uh, audit issues and with uh, like filing of prior taxes. So um, I guess no rest for the weary. So I'm going to still go on, but it, it's, it's tapering down a little bit, which I'm very happy because it's a seasonal cyclical kind of business. Um, I just need a break. Uh, like Dino and I were lamenting at the last meeting about all the PPP applications and loans to keep everybody going. Uh, I think after the elections decided there might be another round of PPP to the CARES Act 2.1.5. whatever, whatever, um, to get going. <laughs> so it's, it's usually a lot of work uh, trying, trying to get people uh, approved for those kinds of loans. So mm -hmm. a, little, a little bit of a challenging year and with the switching of the deadlines, you couldn't do the normal planning because uh, what you thought were the deadlines kind of changed to be, they, they kicked them back a little bit and some they didn't relent on. I just 
don't know. Um, I, I was a little worried with, um, I guess there's some talk in Congress about having uh, the employees not pay into their Social Security, which uh, I don't think that was a really good idea. And I think some of that's been scuttled. Um, but that's kind of on a long, higher level, much higher grade level than people at my pay grade uh, talk about. So I got no complaints. I, I had a very good year, very happy, just uh, need to mop up, clean up and, you know, focus on uh, the next season since that's going to be coming up here starting on this January 1st. Sounds like you're getting rich, Carl. That's great. Uh, richer, yeah, you know. <laughs> hey, Car Carl, I might mention uh, that this is the language for the new stimulus plan coming down the line. Basically, right now, a person who has accepted a PPP loan could not take advantage of the employee retention credits uh, that was not allowed, like the ERC um, or the COVID or the disaster relief ERCs. But supposedly under the new stuff, which is until it's passed, we don't know. But right now it's, it's looking like you can legally double dip. So anybody that has previously gotten PPP will be able to get some of this COVID uh, employee retention credit, which as you probably know, from what I see is a really huge benefit for, for the, the people that have been hired and are currently being hired. That's a lot of money and it's a credit, not a deduction. Yeah, that's nice. I just, I just throw that out, Carl. It has, it still has to be hashed out and blended down and put in the centrifuge and, you know, yeah. So, You're there's, absolutely there's, right. There's tons of that stuff going on right now. I mean, the other thing that business owners really need to think about too is they don't understand and they better start accounting for this stuff or it's going to be a mess come next year. If you get your PPP loan is forgiven which means that money really kind of never came on the books. It was like a grant. Then the way you account for what, how you spent that money is different. Okay. If you, if you paid employees for it, those expense, you can't take those expenses because that money was given to you. So that's going to change the dynamic of your, how you're going to be taxed potentially next year. But if all that money, if, if you don't account for that correctly now, trying to find that next year is just going to be a nightmare, especially in bigger companies. I mean, we've got one client that has like 70 employees and got like $450,000 worth of PPP money. I mean, we're trying to get answers so we can help them to figure that out. And there's not a lot of answers coming out for anybody, which is kind of, I think, what Carl was saying, you know, we don't know what that's going to be like. Yeah, there's still a lot of stuff up in the air with that I think stuff. it's designed that way to be confusing. Yeah, there's a sure. Is there any sense of when they actually will do, do something? <laughs> I guess they got to do it by uh, January 1st, you know, whether or not that grant, that's a grant or it's forgiven. If that's income to you and you take the expense or, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. Not, not necessarily, right? I mean, they yeah. were making tax code changes in January and February. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one year, you know, and it was like, and then they didn't wonder why anybody couldn't get their tax returns. And it was like, <laughs> there was ready so that they could, uh, that they could, you know, that they could submit the tax returns. So. Hmm. That's, that's cool. it for me. Thanks. It was good seeing everybody. I, it was, you know, been a good year. Thanks. Just looking yeah. for a little breather after the race. You're not getting one, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in today to see us, Carl. We appreciate it. Yeah, always do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it sounds like we may be done since uh, no one wants to. Well, wait a second. Okay. <laughs> Go on. Uh, so I just want to give everybody a heads up. Uh, somewhere after the, the 12th, I'm going to be adjusting the links to uh, the Zoom meetings that we're having here because the incubator, we've been using Michael's Zoom since COVID started. I guess we just didn't think about it because we didn't know how long this was going to really last back in March. So uh, we're, we're putting our, our incubator Zoom in place. So just start paying attention to emails. Um, Probably going to try to get Tia to put some stuff out on on Instagram and our social media just to flag us so people know there's going to be a fresh link coming soon. And I do have those new links already posted on our calendar on our website. So um, 
just wanted everybody to know. And just to let you know that my tenure as chair of the board is ending, and next week we will likely to have a new chair. So, oh, oh, I'm just I'm sad. Why? <laughs> My, because I've gotten to know and love you. That's why. <laughs> well, you know, I'll still be around, you know, because <laughs> your love is important to me, Doc. Well, you, I, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy your, your comments and your, your, the way you direct things. I mean, I, I'm still sad. You put a lot of hard work in it. Appreciate that. A lot of yeah. this yeah. personal branding on it. Yeah. Great. Okay, but, folks. Uh, you probably uh, should let people know too is the uh the free webinars that we are providing each week uh to help people understand how to get their businesses back to profitability have started back up so anybody that's interested take a look at the event calendar or the facebook events or whatever and you can find the day and the time each week that that particular free webinar is going to be um provided right and the link one so rest if anybody wants to know whether or not rest can tell them whether it's 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 worthwhile to take an hour of your time it is I learned a lot just talking with dino and, and uh i'll probably be asking him for more help <laughs> okay. uh, yeah and if you know of anybody who could benefit please send them send them our way there. sure because yeah you know, now that you mentioned that, Dino, I should probably go and get my brother-in-law in North Carolina to join one of those. There's, there's a, there's an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm bugging him. I'm like, you know, the year's almost up. <laughs> you have some things to think about, sir. Yeah. yeah. Good. All That's right, guys. Okay. So I have a question. Yeah. I have a question for for Dino. Yeah, since the some of the links last night were broken, are you going to have an opportunity to redo what you were going to do last night? It's the same thing. It's every week. That's what I said. They're, they're scheduled from now until like the middle of January. Yeah, yeah, every you're you're going to be using the same presentation every it's week? It's the same presentation. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Right. No, it's the same presentation. Um, we're just trying to give people as many options as possible to get the information so that they can make a choice as to whether or not they want to come to the 12-week uh, class or not. So. Right. Each day has a different, uh, I'm sorry, each week has a different day and different time just so that we can help folks. Uh, schedule it. Yeah. Get it in their schedule. We know how tough it is running a business, finding a time that you can participate in something like yeah. that. What's the link? Because I, I wanted to do it yesterday and I, I couldn't find anything. Oh, okay. Well, um, if you're following the Florida Business Incubator, it's um, FL Biz Incubator on Facebook. Um, our website is FL, and I'll put it here in the in the feed real quick. Um, but it's FLBizIncubator.org, um, and that should be. You can find you're going to find flags there too. You know, go to the calendar right there on the main page. It'll say webinars. So. Super duper. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good to see everybody. Yes. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Take care. Have fun. Bye. 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 There. All right. Oh. Uh, it's just the two of us now, Don, so we can talk. And, and, and Lynn here. Lynn's here. <laughs> well, she keeps disappearing. <laughs> she's gonna, right, she's, yeah. She's going to uh, give me uh, something, miss, horns or something. Right. I miss Don's uh, a pitch. Okay. <laughs> or was it a pitch? I didn't think it was a pitch, was it? I didn't think it was. I thought that was very educational and background when 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 I was talking. Yes. Okay. I'm asking you when you know uh, I'm scheduled to talk. Danielle Duffy is doing that scheduling now. Oh, so, she is? Yeah. Okay. So I'll reach out to Danielle then. Very good. Very good. All righty. 
So when are you when are we doing lunch again? Whenever you'd like to schedule it. Well, I'll defer to Lynn here because right, right, and the three of us get to have lunch. We can do dinner, uh, uh, whatever your pleasure is. Who pays? <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> I know it just we seemed like a sure it matters. <laughs> we all have to eat. Yes, we do. Just a matter do. of whether you want to break bread with somebody or not. Yeah. Absolutely. So, well, hey, what is your best? Uh, um, does, Lynn has your best. Uh, it's Michael at uh, broom.net. Is that the best? Yes. Uh, email yes. Contact? Yes. Okay. Super. We'll give you some times. All right. Sounds Michael, great. Thanks. Okay. Michael, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, it's certainly my pleasure for sure. Okay. It, it, by the way, is Daniel Daniel gonna Daniel Duffy gonna be the new uh, chair, or who's gonna be the new chair? Uh, we'll know Monday. We'll know Monday. So, is there a vote or something? Yes. Uh, at the city council. No, this is just for the incubator. I know. Yeah, just for the. Oh, so the board of directors votes. Right. Yes. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Michael. See Take you care. soon. I yes. look forward to hearing from you, both All of right. you. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye.